what guarantees are you going to give this liberal about how that will reduce the cost of uh, of uh, gasoline at the pump if we let you drill where you say you want to drill? I can guarantee to the American people because of the inaction of the United States Congress ever increasing prices unless the demand comes down and the five dollars will look like a very low price in the years to come if we are prohibited from finding new reserves, new opportunities to increase supplies. And guess what this liberal would be all about? This liberal will be all about socializing. Uh, um, would be about basically taking over and the government running all of your companies. One of my uh, patrons asked me to comment on this interesting clip from 2008. And you have this United States socialist being extremely honest about what they want to do. They, they want to take your shit away. And they're very open about it. The only thing they're lying about is the fact that they're a liberal. And she is banking on the fact that people don't understand political philosophy. Um, when it comes to politics, most people, especially the young generation, um, they kind of vote what their parents also vote on. Uh, and if their parents were liberal, then, well, you know, this lady comes up, she says she's a liberal, then clearly she must be one, so therefore, you know, vote for her. I mean, hell, she promises that she has a solution to lower the gas prices. And we all know that rich people are evil people. And therefore, give her the vote. So, the, the, this is a problem in democracy. It's one of the weaknesses of democracy. Now, democracy has a lot of uh, strengths. You know, it, it creates really good countries for people to live in. Uh, but it also has weaknesses. And one of them is an uninformed population. People not understanding what's going on means that they can't vote appropriately. So, this lady uh, might get the vote that she doesn't deserve. If people would know what she's about, they wouldn't vote for her. So um, it's important to understand what socialism is. I, I said this uh, a lot of times on my channel, but now that I got an influx of new subscribers, especially people from Britain, that I spoke about Tommy Robinson, I think it's a good idea to explain to people why socialism is wrong. So socialism is the idea that the government should control every private business in the country. And in order to do that, they will go through a socialist revolution where you're going to have thugs coming up at your door asking to take away your shit. So obviously this is going to be a bloody revolution because people are going to fight against this. They, they will not want their shit to be taken. And it's going to end up in violence. And the people who are very wealthy, like for instance these uh, oil companies, uh, the moment they see that the government starts taking people's property, they will leave. It's called capital flight. So the revolution is not going to achieve its goals because the rich people are going to put their money in offshore accounts and they're going to leave the country and you won't have access to them. Um, no one is going to want to do business in your country anymore from uh, foreign places because why would foreign investors come there knowing that they, you, you can not take their shit away? Um, and more importantly, millions of your people are going to die because everyone who asks for socialism is actually asking for genocide. Uh, I spoke with a lot of communists, I spoke with the people from Antifa, and I even read communist literature, and all of them agree that people are going to die, because people defend their property. Uh, and the way they justify it is like, well, it's a revolution, of course people will die. Uh, you, you can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs. So this is where I don't understand things anymore, this is where I'm completely lost. Uh, on one hand, you have ideologies like Nazism, right? And what the Nazis do wrong, if you ask everyone, is the idea of genociding an entire people, right? The, the Holocaust, killing the Jewish people, right? They, they killed people simply because of their ethnicity. If you are a Jew in Nazi Germany, you would be persecuted, regardless if you did something or not. So people would look at it and they would say, well, it's unjust. You know, they didn't get a fair trial. They didn't get to, to uh, prove their innocence or not. I mean, sure, maybe, you know, he did something, but maybe he didn't. So that's, that's why the idea of Nazism is a repugnant ideology, because people will say, well, you're going to end up killing millions of people, right? But when you talk about socialism, all of a sudden, it's fine. And all of a sudden, no one is going to point out, well, you're also going to have to kill millions of people. But you're not doing it based on ethnicity, you're doing it based on class. So why, why is... Killing people based on class, okay, and killing people based on ethnicity, not okay. Like, wh why can't they both be wrong? You're still killing people. It's horrible. 
and this is something that I personally don't understand. If you would have an American politician going up a, a stage and you know promoting Nazi ideology, everyone would be up in arms. I don't think that they would manage to, to, to win a vote ever again. But if they go on stage and promote socialism, there is no backlash. In fact, there are people clapping and applauding that shit. Um, and uh, it's, it's the whole hubris of it all, right? The, the idea that you uh, are worthy of owning someone else's work. Like someone else decided to build something. They invested in that. They took a risk because that investment couldn't have, uh, um, <clears throat> could have paid off or couldn't it. And the person could be on the streets if they made loans from a bank to invest in something. And then turns out that the business doesn't work. So they assume the risk. And now the government is going to say, wow, that's, that's such a successful business you have there. Give it to me. How is that different from being a thug? How is that different from just, you know? Uh, and, and what's even more interesting is that we can actually simplify this complex problem so even a fourth grader can understand. So the main issue is that the gas prices are going up. Now, this lady from the government comes up and says, well, the reason they're growing up is because uh, the corporations are greedy, right? They're very greedy. They want to make a profit. All they care is about money. They don't care about the common folk. Now, the common folk, he doesn't understand economics. He doesn't understand political issues. All he knows is that he's going to the gas pump and every single year he's paying more and more. And he doesn't like that. And he's going to look at this lady and he's going to say, oh, wow, she's right. If something bad is going to happen to the gas companies, I'm not going to help them. I don't care. Right? They're bad people. And this is how the socialists justify going after the wealthy. They first start, stir up the hatred. They first stir up the population against the wealthy. And then when they go after them, they will not get any support because the population already hates them. Right? Why would you help someone you hate? So the real issue is to understand why the gas prices are going up. Now, the major reason why this is happening in a free economy is because the demand is much higher than the supply. This means that there are a lot more people wanting to get gas than you have gas available. Uh, and the way the market fixes this is by raising the price of the gas. Now, what happens is that the people who really don't need gas that month, like they don't need it uh, um, that much, they're not going to buy it. They're not going to spend their money. Meanwhile, the people who really need it are going to be the ones spending money. So what happens when the government takes over? Well, when the government takes over, you haven't really fixed the problem. You haven't fixed the issue. The number of gas hasn't changed. It's still the same amount of gas and there is still not enough of it to go around. So well, what happens is that, let's say you lower the price. Well, the people who didn't really need that gas that desperately, they're going to get it because now it's cheaper. And the people who desperately need the gas for the economy to function, like, let's say, truckers who operate by carrying products from one place of the nation to the other, and they're the backbone of your economy, they might not get the gas because other people who don't really need it, they're getting it. So this is potentially going to collapse the economy because now you have a shortage of gas. The military, for instance, who desperately needs it to run its operations, is not going to get it, right? And you're going to have uh, the, the, a lack of industry because people can't move things from one part of the country to another. You're going to have food shortages. You're going to have people in the street. And then you're going to need to have rations. So that's one thing that happened in Venezuela, for instance. Um, the government taking uh, the resources doesn't change the fact that there aren't enough resources to go around. It's just a different management. Another thing is that people in the government, they're people. They can be corrupt. Now, if you have a small government which is corrupt, it's limited in what it can do with that corruption. But if you have a government that is basically controlling all of the economy, then what makes you think that they're going to be that generous once they take over those resources? Why, why can't they just sell it to other nations and the money they get, they put it in their pockets and they become wealthy? You're just giving them all of the access to everything. And the thing is, like, if a corporation is being greedy, as uh, the socialists like to tell you, well, there's, there are other corporations out there. You can purchase the product from someone else. 
And eventually the greedy corporations, if they want to survive, they will have to lower the price to the point where the price is acceptable by the market. Um, and, and it's another thing that if a corporation does something bad, you, you can protest against it. You can boycott it as a consumer. But if you have a government that controls every single aspect of your life, you, you don't own private property, right? So the, the house that you are uh, staying in is not yours. You're just renting it from the government. Uh, the job you're going to belongs to the government and they can kick you out. When, when the government is corrupt and they start uh, taking money for themselves rather than redistributing them as they promised, who's going to complain? The people who go on the street and riot, well, they, they're going to be found out out of a job quite fast and they're going to be found out that the government doesn't want to rent their own home anymore. So they're going to be unemployed and they're going to be on the streets. And all of this is because you gave the government all of this power. You thought it's a good thing for the government to control the industry. This is wh why socialism doesn't work. It's because the government is not this separate entity that's kind-hearted and full of good intention. The government is really just like another corporation. If you look at it, this is just a group of people that got together and they have a goal in mind. Now, just like a corporation, the government also wants to make a profit because the government runs on an international scale. There are other governments that it's competing with it. And having more money than they do means you get to have a, a stronger say when it comes to making trade agreements. It means you can wage economic war with other countries. This is what Saudi Arabia is doing right now. They are flooding the market with cheap oil, running at a deficit, but just so they can uh, <clears throat> bully Russia, right? They, they want to push Russia's sphere of influence uh, out of the oil market. So therefore, they're willing to do this. They're, they're cheapening the oil. And you can see that having uh, do, uh, the ability to do this gives you a strong economic uh, presence. But this doesn't mean that the people in Saudi Arabia are better off for it. You know, I mean, this can pay off or this can have negative consequences down the line. Now, an another interesting thing that uh, I want to end up with is that if you have a private business and it does poorly well that business is going to go bankrupt and other businesses are going to fill that gap but if you have something owned by the government if it does poorly it's going to affect you as a citizen let me explain how i already made the video about the paris riots and if you haven't watched it please do it got censored in france it got censored in uh I believe Great Britain. So the only place you can actually watch it is on the Thinkery on Sargon's channel. But basically what happens is that the French government controls the railway system. Now the railway system is operating at a deficit because it's controlled by the government. They don't try to make profit with the things they operate. Uh, they just want as many people to be transported as possible. Noble intention, however, when it's going down and the, the ticket money is not enough to cover, um, what happens is they will have to raise the taxes for people, right? So people are being taxed more regardless if they use the railway system or not. So what happens is now the government, you know, has to come in and uh, either privatize the railway or take away some of the benefits that the people running at the railway have. And because the government is taking away the benefits, you have people on the street rioting and protesting against the government. So, so this is why it's a bad idea to have the government control uh, certain uh, areas of the industry. I mean, the government should control the military, it should control the police, it should control the fire department. right? But the moment you, you allow the government to control private businesses and you go into socialism, you're going to notice that the economy is going to be worse off for it rather than better. Unless you can literally pull money out of the ground like Saudi Arabia can. And, you know, I, I guess that will last for a little bit longer than... Um, than it's normal. Same with Norway and some other countries because you, you constantly see uh, a lot of politicians going, what about Norway? What about this country? What about that? Yeah, they, they can actually pull money from the ground. Okay, and they can pull so much of it that, you know, they, they have this ability to allow the government to control these areas. Uh, but for normal nations, for, for the rule, like not the exception, allowing the government to control private uh, owned businesses it always ends up in economic failure. And uh, if you want to go full socialism, not only does it go in economic failures, but it goes with dead people in the streets.